Good afternoon, good afternoon, good afternoon. I want to thank you guys for tuning in to Up Close and Personal with Angela on behalf of Aspiring Authors Magazine. Of course, I am Angela Thomas-Smith, the founder of AALAC, which is the African American Author Literacy Awareness Campaign, where I truly believe in bringing awareness to brown authors all over this world. I am also the CEO of Aspiring Authors Magazine, where my desire is to bridge the gap between brown authors around this world and to touch on topics that other people don't want to talk about that's affecting our brown community. So today I have an amazing guest, um, author Denise Turney, and sh I'm going to bring her up and allow her to share just a little bit about herself. And then we're going to jump into the conversation. Hi. Hello. Hello. It's, it's a, I'm going to say Merry Christmas, Happy Kwanzaa, and Happy New Year to whole nine yards to everybody out there. Happy to be here with you, Angela. Thank you. Um, thank you for coming. Um, I want you to share with those that are tuned in and those that will tune in later, um, just a little bit about who you are. Okay. I'm author Denise Turney. Um, and you can learn more about me. I'm gonna give you my website just to kick it off. My website is just so C H I S T E L L.com. Again, that's C H I S T E L L.com. I love for you can read free excerpts, read my bio, my media background, et cetera, and learn more about me. But I started writing uh, when I was 10 years old. I started on my first novel when I was 12. You see these gray hairs, so you know I'm not, I'm, I'm a long way from there, as you can see. But my first published novel, I'm, I've actually have authored probably well over 20 books. I've published to date six books. I have a, another novel coming out in January. Well, it was actually a nonfiction book on author book marketing. I've learned so much over the 30 years I've been like it just in the book industry and i just want to share it to help others to avoid like wasting their money getting caught up in scams learn what a good deal is and ways to really get more exposure for their books but my first novel so i've, I've published to date six i have another one coming out in january and then i'm so excited to share with you guys that it probably will be february or march you're going to get to meet miss rosetta blay and she's a little girl who's 10 years old and she the story is set in cincinnati ohio she goes to harriet tubman harriet tubman uh, uh elementary and middle school in cincinnati she is so spunky <laughs> she, you, she's she's sort of mischievous and she does the stuff she gets herself into so is she gonna kick off that book series rosetta blay the talent show queen so look out for miss rosetta blay but i generally write adult adult novels uh they're inspirational novels i've written mysteries which i never set out to do but most of my stories are family sagas so my first novel is portia and it came out in august of 1998. i researched the book industry before i published portia and then i got out there and i really hustled it i would go over to grocery stores ask them can i put up a flyer i was i was i was putting flyers back then even on if, if apartments, I was putting flyers on uh, car windows. I was, I was going to college, universities, putting up things. I was doing radio interviews to hustle Portia. But Portia is an inspirational story about a successful defense attorney living in Chicago, and she, she's coming out of a, a, a bad relationship, uh, dealing with domestic violence. But in this, it, what, what what readers might find interesting about Portia's situation. I don't put a lot on that bad relationship. I don't I don't focus on that a lot in this story. She's coming out of it. Her parents had a very loving relationship. So you scratch your head. Her father was active in a civil rights movement. Her mother's a teacher along the Marva Collins, uh, where, where you where you she took like Marva Collins, you take a student who the school system says is mentally retarded, and you find and you work with them and they actually the IQ Q is genius level. So her mother was her mother was like this. She's like, what is she doing in this relationship? So she's coming out of a bad relationship. She goes to an annual Christmas party uh, put on by a newspaper that she has always gone to. She meets this wonderful, wonderful man. So her life is really starting to go up. I mean, she's been successful as a defense attorney for years, but now her relationship is starting to go up and she discovers she has breast cancer. And this wonderful man and her family and her faith, she uses this to deal with the breast cancer. And this is Portia. And I tell people, it, it's not a story that'll bring you down. It's very realistic. I have people who really dealt with it to read the book. 
And I, at the time, I, it came out of me having a breast cancer scare. But um, you feel uplifted. One reader gifted it to her mother who was in the hospital dealing with breast cancer. And she said her mother was just going to throw in a towel. And she said she read Portia and her mother decided um, her mother decided to, to, to live. Uh, and then other books, Love, Love Pour Over Me. Just going to go real quick. Love Pour Over Me. Long Walk Up is my top seller right now. It's a story about a six-year-old orphan in Africa, and she goes on to become Africa's first woman president. Long Walk Up. And then nonfiction, Awaking Blessings of Inner Love. And this book has shortcuts, daily techniques of self-love you can use to really awaken yourself to more and more goodness. Yes, and it has been a, a, a journey that I have truly loved. It's been extremely rewarding Th through book festivals, book conferences, panels I've set on, radio, television, uh, interviews I've done. I've met so many wonderful people. What made me choose writing is, yes. an, inter <laughs> is an interesting story in itself. I was, I was an avid reader from the time I was five, six, seven years old, I was an avid reader and I didn't know why. I just love to read. And one time I was reading, I can still see myself laying on my stomach. I might've been six or seven years old and it felt like angels from within me asked me, why do you think you like to read? And I just paused and then I, uh, my inner ears, not these ears. And I just went back to reading, I was a little girl. Well, we, we moved to Knoxville, Tennessee when I was nine and my sister comes running home with this book, this small book of poetry. And I, I would read like 30 to 50 books a week when I was a little girl. And so my, I, I was surprised that my sister found this book in the school library and I hadn't seen it. And so she said, look what I found in the library. And then she said, she lays it on the bed and she goes, I'm going back outside to play. And I was in a funk. But so eventually I picked the book up and I read it. It was a book of poetry by Gwendolyn Brooks. After all the reading I had done, no book affected me like this book. And none. That book put me almost in like, I can't tell you what kind of state I was in. Nine years old. And I felt like the characters came alive. I said, oh, that's like I'm Ruby. And that was like this person. And it just had such an effect on me. So I sit down from reading the book. It was a thin book of poetry again by Gwendolyn Brooks. And this feeling came over me. <laughs> and I said, oh, I'm a writer. And that's how I started writing. I didn't ask to be a writer. I didn't pray, Lord, let it be successful like that. Make me a writer. It was revealed to me that I was. So that's how. I, and I started writing. I started writing plays. I started writing short stories, poems. I just started writing and then in my journals and then at 12, I started on my first novel. Wow. You said at age 12? I started my first novel when I, I started writing when I was 10. I started my first novel when I was 12. Wow. I, I, I <laughs> And you, how many books you say you have? I've written probably 20. I've published now uh, six, contributed to, to one. And then by the end of next year, I should have 10 published books. Wow. Wow. Oh, there are a lot of writers, I'm telling you, who write 30 to 70 books. I'm like way behind. <laughs> <laughs> I have 20. Um, I have 20. And, and, and I started writing in 2016. See? Um, See? So, but most of mine, I do a lot of collaboration projects. Like, I'm getting ready to, I, I'm working on three collaboration projects um, for 2021. Um, so I do a lot of collaboration projects because I want um, to give um, authors an opportunity. Those that think they don't have a voice and those mm -hmm. that don't think they don't know what to do. I want to show them how um, they can um, become an author. And, and, and I do that through the um, collaboration um, projects that I do um, just to show them that they can become an author if that's what they choose to do later on. Yeah, you want to you want to share your voice. That's important. Especially, and everybody's, yeah. got a me everybody's got a powerful message. Everybody does. And people don't understand that. And, and and they just, a lot of people leave here and they leave here with so mm. much stuff inside of them. You know, oh. and, 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 and I just, I, I don't want to be one of those people. 
I, yeah. I, I want to give. I want. I, I want people to to know that they have purpose. That they didn't just get dropped out of the sky, mm -hmm. and that they can't just wait. They can't just sit around and wait for things to just mm. fall from the sky because nothing is falling from the sky. Everything that you have is inside of you, and yeah. we gotta you walk. Could, it you could say that a zillion times. I'm telling you, I would. I fell into this trap, um, and and I don't know if this has to do with religion. Uh, I, I'm a, I'm a, my brother, my brother's a, oldest brother's a pastor. My other brother's a minister, and but it's something with when you look at the scriptures and you look at Christ's miracles. I just fell into this trap, and I know other people. I've heard people say it. Well, you just expect if God wants it for you, it'll just happen like magic. So you won't have to do anything. You won't have to look for a job. God will have somebody just knock on your door and say, "Here, here's the job." You, and that's. And, and that's the that's the miseducation and 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 and, and the the non teaching because when, when we get saved you know they don't teach us these things you know no. and then the first and when something happens we run because you know we don't understand that Luke one and thirty seven is real that if you stand it's possible but you have to know that things are gonna come because he tells you that in the word. You know, and then he he also tells you that you know <laughs> he's a faith. It does not mm. make it easy, but it makes it possible. So that alone should let you know that things are gonna come at you. Yeah, and, and it's not magical. I think that's my point. You have to, you have to, you if you want to be a writer, you have to sit down and write a book. You can't just daydream about it. It's not gonna write itself. It's it's it's. I mean, I could tell you stories of people who where uh, one guy was going into depression. He didn't get, didn't have a job. The pastor visited with him. The pastor said, where have you applied? I can, if I know somebody there, I'll put in a good word for you. He said, I haven't applied for any jobs. He said, like, why would you be depressed? You don't have a job then. He said, I'm waiting for God to bring me that job. So that's again, that, that concept of, I don't have to write my book. I don't have to market my book. God's just going to make this magically happen. And, and, I don't know how many people will leave this earth wondering why something didn't happen because they expect it to magically happen. Mm -hmm. Exactly, exactly. And, and <laughs> it's sad but true. And you know that that just goes back. Faith without works is dead. You know, if you don't if you don't put in no works, how can you mm -hmm. expect to get something out? You know, I, I use the 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 the. <laughs> I tell people all the time. You you pull up to the ATM. If you ain't depositing nothing into the ATM, how you expect to get something out? So that's what I tell people. And, and, and people get that because people, they, they, they understand money. They know if you don't go to work, then you're not going to get, you're not going to get no money. That, mm. that just, the, the word tells you, <laughs> it tells you if, if you don't work, you don't eat. Yeah. So that, that <laughs> I want you to share with those that are tuned in and, and those that will hear this replay, how they can follow you and how they can get your books. Oh, well, thank you. Thank you again, Angela. This is just so gracious of you to do this. I, I author yourself. Um, and I just tell you for uh, for other listeners who might be authors, I have also have a radio show, Off the Shelf Books Talk Radio. And I've, I've, been, I've had that show for probably well over 10 years. And I just like Angela, I spotlight the guests. It's like I hardly ever even mentioned any of my books. And I just give them that spotlight. So. I love to do that as well. So you can find me there at Off the Shelf Books Talk Radio or at my website, again, Chistel, C H I S T E L L dot com. All of my books right now are in print and ebook format Amazon, Barnes and Noble, Kobo, Google Books, uh, Walmart, et cetera. And if you don't see it, like if you go into a bookstore and you don't see my books, just ask the clerk, say, I would like to get like Long Walk Up by Denise Turner or Love Fall with Me by the Nice Turner, Awaking Blessings of Inner Love by the Nice Turner. And they can order it for you because it's carried, my books are carried by the largest book distributors in the world. So they can get a, a library, can get a copy again, or or you can read free excerpts at chistel, uh, chistel.com. So thank you. I so appreciate it. Uh, thank you. Thank you for um, coming on and sharing today. Um, I always ask my guests, um, I'm on this word power. Um, power is the word um, for the month. Um, what does that word mean to you? Oh, power. That word uh, off the top of my head means to me living in oneness, wholeness with the creator. 
living in it. so god's thought is my thought it's like it's it's it, it, i don't have a, a, a thought that's separate from god i am nowhere near there nowhere near there because when you when you're there i'm told all you will feel is peace all you will feel is joy you will you will feel love you will feel safe all the time my emotions go like you know sometimes i feel peace sometimes i feel worried so, and and once your thoughts are totally in alignment with guys that's power that right there to be one with your source that right there is power that is power wow so it, it it what I've been asking everybody, God downloaded that word in my spirit and like he literally broke down each letter, like the P, the O, the W, E, the R. So the P stands for position, the O stands for overcome, the W stands for being a willing vessel, and the E stands for empowerment, the R stands for resilience. So when he shared, when he downloaded it in me and, 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 and asked me to share it with this young lady that, that day, um, it was position to, in order to position ourselves, we have to get the education. So whether we get the education through spiritual means, um, uh, sitting on the pastors, um, reading your Bible, or if we get it through the traditional way, through going to school, um, however we get it, um, it's not meant to be just sit on. It's not just mm -hmm. meant to be held inside. It's meant to be applied to our life because that is what helped us overcome. You know, those tests becomes testimonies. Oh, yeah. And those oh, testimonies yeah. are allowed so that you can show others how to overcome. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's the O for overcome. And then in order for you to, to, to empower somebody, you got to be a willing vessel. Oh, yeah. To use the education that you that you received, and and and, and, and you got the you coming on here sharing those twenty books that you have. That that, that that's that's being a willing vessel to mm. show somebody else to empower somebody else because you're not sitting on that knowledge that's been in, 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 in put it into you. That's been put mm. down. You ain't sitting on it. You're releasing it. All that you that you receive through empowerment, you're releasing it through your resilience because you're pressing. All that come at you, you didn't give up. You still here. You right here on this. You you right here on this interview. You 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 you've been pressing for for ten years on your radio show. You've been pressing since twelve doing books. And I know a lot probably don't came at you since then, but you're still mm. on this journey. You're still on this journey. You didn't give up. You're an example of resilience. So now you can tell people what power is because you're an example of power. And see, people don't know that all that that's inside of you, your voice is your power. <laughs> and, and, and we're waiting for something to drop out the sky. Yeah. We waiting for somebody to hand us something. We waiting for something. Just like you said, the man never applied. Mm -hmm. But he was waiting for God to give him a job. How? God, he, 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 all things are possible through him. But if you're not doing nothing, if you're not stepping out on faith and believing that he's going to put you in tune with somebody, because it's all about the vibrations that you send out. You mm -hmm. know, I tell people that I, I, I want to be that pebble that's tossed out into the pond. Uh, and then when you see those ripples that 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 ripple that that rip from that rip, that's what I that, that's all I want to see. I want mm. my ripples to rip. <laughs> okay. I want my ripples to rip. Okay. I, I want that energy to flow and flow and flow and flow and flow and flow. Mm. When I walk in the room, I don't want to have to open my mouth and say nothing. I want my energy. I want people to be like, oh my God, I can feel her. Okay. That's that, that's that's how we that's how we should be. Yeah. He said we should do greater works. Mm. He didn't say we should be minute. He didn't say that we should just be average. He didn't say that we should just be. We allow people mm. to put limitations on us because the God that I serve, if He created all this and stuff that we ain't even seen yet. Yeah, because it's stuff that ain't even been invented that he don't create it when he created all of this. When he said it was done. 
That's a whole other show. Stop. Oh, go ahead. Oh, what was that R for? What was the R? Resilience. Oh, resilience. 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 Look, okay. I got a calendar. Look, I got a whole calendar with a whole bunch of words that he don't reveal to me and broke them down. Everyday words that, you know, people don't told us what they mean. But what do it mean to you spiritually? What do he mm. say it means to you? And everybody I ask these words, it may not be the exact same word, word for word. But it's similar. But it's on one accord. It lines up. So that's, I'm saying we got to stop letting people tell us mm -hmm. who we are. Just like I was, I was listening to a minister and she said, you know, people don't got faith twisted because they, they, they try to put faith on just being a Christian belief when it's a belief system. It's what you believe. Mm. So what is your belief system? What have you been taught? What, what do God tell you? You know, you can't you can't believe what other people say. They can tell you something, but you got to believe it for what he communicated to you for. That's why you got to study, show yourself approved. That's why you got to have a relationship with him. That's why you got to communicate. Man, I'm telling you. <laughs> uh, yeah, you gotta have that relationship. You look, be I, that you, I don't even know why I be going look. Oh gee. <laughs> you something again. Okay, hold it up. Yeah, the wheels are the wheels are turning. <laughs> You're like, oh God, let me get this. Look, this is about you. This ain't even about. I, I, I'm sorry. <laughs> God is so good, and I just, I, people, mm, I know people oh, yeah. probably like. Look, I just buried my brother. Um, last oh, Thursday. Last, last Thursday. you. Oh mercy. Mm -hmm. Last Thursday, like Sunday bless before you, last. I was well, on air, you. like right before I got ready to go on air, because I do a radio show on Sundays from eight to ten. And I was getting ready to go on air, and I got the call. You know, oh, I was mercy. still, I still did my show, and people was like, "How did she do her show?" Mercy, God is good because oh, I know yes. my brother. My brother ain't got to worry about nobody stretching his head for him no more. He ain't got to worry about nobody pushing him in the stomach to make him cough no more. He ain't got to worry about that old depleted body. He ain't got to worry about that. He can walk now. When he oh, ain't, yes. walk, he ain't been able to walk because he was been a quad for over twenty years. He ain't been able to uh, walk, but he can walk. He can run. He can yeah. dance. Yes. <laughs> so you know what? That's why I. Can, I'm telling you, it ain't about when it ain't about these cars. It ain't about these houses. It ain't about. I'm talking. About, I'm trying to. I'm trying to get on. I'm trying to get to a whole nother level. People don't even understand. Hmm. Mm. Don't even understand. I thank you for coming on here today. Oh, thank I, you for I, having I, me. <laughs> I definitely um, want to stay connected with you um, mm -hmm. because I know um, with what you do and what I do, um, we can we can share back and forth. Oh, yes, yes. Resources and information. Um, mm -hmm. That's what I do. I, I like to network. I like to collaborate. I love to partner, and I, I just like to make a way for authors and, and give them an opportunity because well, thank that's why I started my organization. Right. So, um, and thank you for all that you do. Um, well, is there anything? You. You would like to leave with um, the listeners before you leave today? Well, uh, again, uh, don't fall into that trap of magical thinking. Uh, if you if you haven't heard from the Lord, seek 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 the Lord's voice and guidance. Because what, what what you and God do in alignment that that's going that's going that's going to be successful. And it's going to bless so so many so many people. And then I want to also say Happy Holidays, Merry Christmas, and 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 and. Happy 2021. Uh, oh my goodness. This 2020 was, they thought Y2K was going to be, people said when year 2000 rolled around, they said, oh, that year, everything's going to go chaotic. They were 20 years off. <laughs> it was 2020. Mm. Okay. 2020. 2020. So it. happy 2021. Thank God we got through all the changes that came, rolled out that nobody saw coming in January 1st, 2020. Oh my goodness. We all made it through. Thank you, Lord. So happy new year and Merry Christmas and happy holidays to everybody. Thank you. You have a great day and same to you. Thank you. Thank you. I want to thank you guys for tuning in to Up Close and Personal with Angela. I hope your holidays are blessed and safe. Um, you can tune back in tomorrow. I will have my last guest for 2020. So tune in tomorrow. And I want to thank you guys that have been following me and have been supporting the magazine and AALAC for, oh my God, since we started. But I thank you. I thank you. Um, for all of you that support me across my various platforms. Um, and thank you for tuning in today. If you were blessed by this broadcast, I want you to please share 
this across your circle of influence. Again, I love you guys with the love of Christ. Be blessed.